you got to show up with the practice. Like it's constantly asking yourself, well, two things. How can I create conditions of healing? How can I serve? But like, who am I really? Who am I really? You know, I personally am here to say to everybody, believe it if you want, but you're actually not the wound. You're not what happened to you. You're not what somebody called you. You're actually the healer. You're not the conflict. You are actually the solution. Um, The divine self, the essential nature, has the power to work through all the heavy stuff down here. Yeah! What's up, everybody? Your life alchemist, your dragon. Welcome to Alchemized Life. I'm your host, Justin David Carl. This is a show where I seek out and share expertise, wisdom, and thought leadership in all domains with the mission of empowering and inspiring you to proactively design and truly live a life worth living. We're all in this together. And when we do the work together, we go so much farther, so much faster, and have so much more fun. Without further ado, let's dig into this episode and alchemize life. Daniel Laporte, so good to have you on the show. This is a dream come true. And what I mean by that is when I read the Firestarter sessions in October of 2016, you had an exercise where you talked about this idea if you went to this dinner and all these incredible people were at that dinner that could help you with your career and you becoming the person that you deeply, deeply want to become in this in this lifetime, who would be there? And you were one of those people. So even though we're... What was I wearing? Was it good? Did oh, I look great? Of course. You had that like <laughs> spiritual hipster swag on, you know, you probably were rocking right some crystals like me <laughs> and uh, you're looking yeah. good and divine. And so, yeah, I just, this is crazy because that was literally seven years, six and a half years ago or so. And I'm so honored to have you on the show. And I just want to express my deep gratitude you know, in full authenticity for you being here, because this is just a dream come true. So thank you, Danielle, for coming. I really thought that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So to kick off, before I introduce you, I want to jump into something that's just been on my mind like crazy. And that's how to protect yourself from the energy of your partner, family members, friends, and like clients, you know, maybe you're a coach or maybe you're, you know, in a, a work type of work where you have to deal with a lot of clients. And I'm just curious as somebody who's worked with a lot of clients and a lot of people and a lot of energy, kind of some of your practices and ideas around that. I'm excited to get into this and there's a couple layers. So one is, so it should start with like the metaphysical layer. The, Let's do the it. Esoteric. Okay. Okay. So esoterically speaking, everybody has an auric field. Mm. You have an energy field where all these kind of bubbles and your thoughts have a particular vibration and they hang out in that energy field. Your thoughts are energy. So you could imagine like little marbles, little spheres, a smaller energy hanging out in the big sphere of energy that you want. Okay. So I hang out with you. My energy bubble bumps up against your energy bubble. Mm -hmm. Whether we're like dinner party or we're doing an interview or you're coaching me, we're we're kind of, we're getting a little bit mergy. Mm -hmm. And so my energy is going to affect your energy. It's the way it works. We can hang out with some people. We feel more drained. We feel more lit up. So that influence and that exchange is a real thing. And it's why to this is a really important phrase in my life right now so in order to create conditions of healing create conditions of healing you want to ideally ideally another important word you want to be hanging out with people who are higher vibration Mm -hmm. who are more conscious who have more um i don't want to call it positivity because that's a whole slippery slope but who have higher frequency energies in their big energy ball 
like energies of love, compassion, acceptance, resilience, all the good stuff, right? So we can put, we can put a pause there, pin in that. All right. But how likely is it that we're going to be operating like high frequency people 24 seven? It's not that likely because everybody's human and everybody has dark days and bright days. Even the most evolved people can be dealing with depression and loss and grief, and they are carrying that around with them. So this is where we, we enter into like the dark side of this whole theory, which oh, has always really frustrated me in the self-help space. Um, you know, basically just hang out with winners that you want to emulate. And that is such divisive bullshit yeah. because one, it makes relationships really transactional. Yeah. It makes you kind of vampirical. Hey, you're a winner. I want to hang with you. So your good, good stuff and your wealth and your connections and your vibes rubs off on me. Okay, that's not entirely <laughs> healthy. And we also want to be of service. We want to heal the people. We want to be the uplifter of people who are like low and confused and seeking comfort and lucidity. So I think the answer is, I also want to talk about how ego comes into this. The answer is you have to be so full of love and clarity and higher frequency yourself, that all that negative stuff that you're interacting with, whether it's a client or a patient or someone in a restaurant or your partner's bad news, that that stuff, it just dissolves at your own edges, that your light is really helping to transmute all the stuff that's coming. And we know those people, those people are, are rare. You know, they walk into the room, everybody feels better or scared because they feel seen, you know, intimidated by the person who's got the insight. The, sh the, the ego side of, I have to protect myself. Or let me go there and I'll go to why protecting yourself is legit and how to do it. The ego side is, I think I'm more special than everybody. Everybody is low vibe. Everybody wants a piece of what I got. And so I have to be protective of all my specialness. That's coming from a wounded side. Okay. The the heart intelligence will tell you I'm worthy of protection. And in order to serve more, I do need to protect myself. But love is the protection. Awareness is the protection. It's not so the heart will protect itself by inclusiveness and gentleness and taking care of yourself. The ego is going to try and quote protect itself by you're less than me, you're more toxic than me. So I need to have hyper boundaries. I need to walk around staging myself all the time. And that turns into paranoia, which is not what anybody wants. So yeah, that's what I have to say about Yeah, and right. I, so to put some, give it some context, using myself as an example, um, you know, growing up, you know, my mom was a single mom and she had three boys <laughs> and that was a more than a handful. So needless to say, at times it was stressful for her. And, you know, as a young boy, I didn't have kind of the emotional capacity or kind of the tools to, uh, you know, be around her when she was like really stressed out. So I would shut myself in my room and play video games or go like run off to the woods and play. And that became kind of like my default kind of protection tool anytime I was around any darker energy, right? I don't necessarily want to label it as negative because like you said, we all have our dark days. Hell, I've been through depression, suicidal depression, and I'm one of the most like positive, optimistic people I know, but like even I go through that. So one of the things I'm you know, that tool doesn't work for me anymore because I want to be there for my mom and for my wife when they're having a tough time, when they're having a shitty day. I want to like be able to be in their auric energy field and be a lighthouse for them or just be there for them. And so what I'm trying to figure out now is like how do i be with them but not take on their energy right how do i not force them to move to my energy 
but I'm just there with them. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of in great. the middle of figuring yeah. out, so I'm just asking you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such a great point to identify that that tool you had of I'm going to go to my room, I'm going to go outside to protect myself from my mother's vibe. It works then. It's genius, self-soothing. It's such, it's, it's, it's brilliant. But like we outgrow those tools, right? You can yeah. go in and shut the door. But I think it's so important to note that because so many of the things we do now in relationships that we think are healthy or self-preservation, it's, it's outmoded stuff. Yeah. It worked when we were five. It worked when we were 15. Yeah. You got to you gotta move on. Doesn't um, work with my wife. <laughs> does it, it's not going to work with your wife. No. Yeah. I think it's, this is one truth that has really helped me whether it's in romantic relationships, as a mom, as a coachy, peachy kind of person, you actually cannot change anybody. You can't okay. change anybody. You can't save anybody. You can create conditions for them to like unfold, to try and get things. You could put things on their path like, hey, here's an idea or here's a supplement. But they have to resonate with the idea. They got to open their mind. They got to do the exercise, whatever it is. So Again, to use the, the ego term, like our unhealed self is going to want to fix that person because it's uncomfortable. We want happiness. We want to, we want, you know, a pleasant house. We want to get what we want. We want to get our needs met. So why can't you just see things my way, feel my thing, feel things my way and get better? Okay. So that's our wounded self. The higher self is going to say, I'm good with you. I'm good with you. I'm good if you're sad. I'm good if you're happy. Because like I'm connected to my source, connected mm. to my heart intelligence, and I'm going to do the things to keep being loving and spacious. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good either way. And at the same time, this is an ideal. But you know what? I'm so loving, I can deal with not ideal for a minute. And that takes that's where the work is, because the ego is saying, I didn't. You know, this is not what I signed up for. This is a commitment. <clears throat> You're not taking your supplements. You aren't taking care of yourself. So I got to deal with your bad mood, all these things. But that, that mother love, that father love, that God love, that I got it love, that, you know, when you identify with your higher self, with your original nature, your divine nature, you, you got room. You got, you got a lot of space for somebody. You can deal, you can hold space while they're struggling with addiction or moodiness or hormones or whatever it is and here's the thing here's the thing you will actually feel stronger and more powerful because you do that Mm. you will start to get the natural rule of like i was just there for her again and you're human so you're gonna have some resentment will creep up so there's that i can hold i'm so loving i have space for this yeah and my experience is that how we really do help people heal. We become the healer, the healing assistant to others. Whether mm-hmm. it's just like someone's in a bad mood, someone's got an illness, is we sit with them in their pain. It's just witnessing. It's just all witnessing. Like, don't confuse my mind with another stuff or another how to, unless I am support. Yeah. It just, and that, you know, I have to be projecting because, you know, I'm a predominantly feminine creature and I just, I don't want a solution. I just want to be witnessed, you know, and that is actually where the transmutation happens. I think that love, real love, divine love is an as is power, an as is situation. Mm. I'm not asking you to not be grieving. I'm not asking you to be in a better mood. Like, you know, you as a coach, you, you know, you can't ask your, your clients to be more passionate or to be less scared. It doesn't work. You're, yeah. you really loving them as is and helping them get to the next thing. And I think that is, that dynamic is more powerful than people realize because when you let something be what it is, it blossoms a bit. Nothing changes until you accept it, including people. Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Veg Nutrition, Live Better. So I'm actually a Veg Elite athlete, 
And before I joined the team, I spent months doing my due diligence to make sure that the company was vision, mission, and value aligned with me, my values, my mission, my vision, and my lifestyle. I got to know the owners super well. I even got to know the person who formulates all the products and they passed with flying colors. So I couldn't be more excited to represent a company that I feel so aligned with. And I want to tell you about two of my favorite products. The first is the Veg Pre-Workout. So when I first went vegan or mostly vegan, the last thing for me to go fully vegan was finding a vegan pre-workout that gave me the focus, the energy, and the power that I was looking for. And I can tell you, this is the best pre-workout that I've ever had. It gives me incredible focus and energy. And what's probably the best is it leaves me with no crash after I take it, which is great. And the flavors are so freaking good. There's literally peach mango and a Patriot pop that tastes like, you know, the firecracker popsicles, cherry lemon lime flavor. They're literally so good that I can dry scoop them. And they just released a watermelon flavor for just in time for summer. And it's incredible. So that's the first product. The second product is arguably also my favorite, and that's the plant protein. Comes in three incredible flavors, chocolate peanut butter, vanilla ice cream, and cold brew coffee. Yep, you heard me. Cold brew coffee flavor. It tastes incredible, all three flavors. 25 grams of protein, fully organic, incredible ingredients, heavy metal tested, and it is my go-to post-workout. Make sure that I'm recovering and refueling and giving my muscles the protein that they need to rebuild for that next workout. So go to vegnutrition.com slash dragon and try their full line of supplements and you'll get 15% off. Or you can just use dragon at checkout and you'll get 15% off. So that's vegnutrition.com slash dragon to get 15% off. Veg Nutrition, live better. Yeah, I love that. I was actually just reading that part of your book. And before I, I jump into your book too much, let's do a quick little introduction from me on who you are. So Daniel Laporte is the author of several best-selling books, including The Firestarter Sessions, which I mentioned at the top of the show, The Desire Map, White Hot Truth, and most recently, her newest book, How to Be Loving. And she's also a member of Oprah's Super Soul 100. She's the founder of the Heart Centered Leadership Program, which has over 400 certified coaches across the world. She's a spiritual teacher, She's an incredible creative writer and just creator all around. And she truly is a lighthouse in this world. So uh, I was just reading kind of earlier today how you said that, that nothing changes until you accept it. And I come, you know, from kind of the world of fitness, one aspect of me, I, I'm a multifaceted person. And the saying in that world is, nothing changes unless you do. And it's a lot more kind of like masculine, <laughs> like you got to go do some shit. And then when I read that, uh, or actually I was listening to your audiobook, nothing changes until you accept it. It made me think back to what you resist persists. And so there's almost like an evolved uh, way of thinking about it for me, which is nothing changes unless you do and unless you accept it. Yeah, I think they're all true. I mean, one one learning that's really hot for me right now is that you're talking about what you resist persists. Same thing, I just want to just give it a little more edge, is what you run away from will chase you. <laughs> yes. And uh, like for example, this is why it's like so fresh for me. 
you know, I've just gotten through, we're just getting through winter. I live in the West Coast, can I live in Vancouver? I have, I'll put this in past tense, but historically I have respiratory issues, but asthma and then there's mold that gets kicked up, mold spores in the air all, you know, can be a little rough in the winter for me. And I couldn't get over it in December. And I decided, like, I just got to get out of town. I need sun. I need dry heat. I need salt water. It will help me heal. So I went to Mexico. And, but the energy was, I was fleeing. I was okay. escaping. I got to get out of here. It was, a, it was really a running. And what ha- as a result, I just you not, know, you take your energy wherever you go. Everywhere we went in Mexico for the first two weeks, I had to continue to keep creating escape scenarios. It's like, I get to a hotel, I smell the mold, my okay. sinuses start to swell up, I start, oh, you know, it's hard for me to breathe, gotta go. Like, we were scheduled to be at three di- in three different places, we had to go to seven. And it was just like, we were on the run for weeks, just like, this place is a network, this place is a network. And I realized, if I left with a different energy, which is, I'm going to heal, as opposed to, I'm running away, probably would have created a really different response, a really different experience. And I mean, there's more layers in there about me really accepting my strength. And, you know, I just come to this kind of full circle conclusion of I won't run from my respiratory stuff. I won't run from my body. I won't run from where I'm living. I will integrate it and I will be able to live beautifully wherever I want. I'm going to get so well. I, you know, I can just make it more than work. Um, Yeah. And in the book, you mentioned like when our body is you know fighting off an illness we don't just like run away from it we integrate it ideally um, within well, our we, ideally cool. within our body yeah, yeah ideally Cult- is a good culturally, point culturally most of us try and run away from it. oh 100 percent. So- i'm the first person it's like oh i don't feel well let's take some nyquil and dayquil and like pretend i'm not sick and keep and keep working and keep going to the gym and like <laughs> you know what i mean I'm getting better, but that that was the me a year or two ago. Okay, good to know. Lemma confessional, Nyquil confessional. I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So going kind of back to this, I know you've built like a lot of different teams, and you've had you know uh, different sizes of teams and and different people on your team. And I have like a business partner in my coaching program. And he has other businesses and I have other businesses. And one of the things that I'm like realizing is like, I might be in a like great space, but if he's stressed out and in our coaching program is like, you know, going good. But if he's stressed out, like he brings that energy into a meeting, even if he's not showing it now that I've kind of moved into this space of like, opening my heart to be there for my clients i'm realizing like i'm so open that i'm like vulnerable and and now i'm like okay how do i stay you know super open in your book how to be loving like you mentioned like you can't close the heart down you know what i mean and you have to like love through it all and i'm trying to understand how I love my business partner and how I love my mom and my wife, um, you know, when they're going through really tough times. And specifically, I kind of want to look at at the business angle because I don't want to tell my business partner not to be stressed out. I want to be a lighthouse for him when he's stressed with his other businesses, right? And so I'm just wondering with you who've had, you know, lots of different, people building out your, you know, your programs and your business, like how do you protect yourself or work with others? Like when they are bringing all their energy in, and I would say you have a very open heart. Well, the first layer is, and this is really, this is the opening of how to be loving is that your heart is actually always open. It's the mind. It's like, so like you are love, you do have the spaciousness, you you have this foundation of inclusiveness and it's the ego mind that comes in and says, ah, we, we sign this contract or I'm right and they're wrong or I'm inferior and they're superior. So it's just really good to like note, it's the thinking that has you be restricted. You got the stuff, right. you got the love, 
It's the thoughts that are going to create the obstacles. Now, this question is really so tricky when it comes to business, right? This is where like the most growth for me because it's way easier for me to feel like I can accommodate my partner's bad day or my son's struggles because it's not just love, but it's different, more difficult in business because it's like we have people that we're serving and there's a bottom line and then there's all this old conditioning about business. So this is my most recent learning. You're really pulling out of me like the most, the freshest stuff is I am generous by nature. And no one will ever tell me that I've made any errors in that way. It's just like, I just feel like you can't overgive. And I know lots of shrinks are going to be like, oh my gosh, red flag. But I, I'm, love is never, being loving and being generous has never been to my peril. I've never regretted it. That's what I want to say. I've never yeah. regretted it. Um, what I've seen in myself is that I have given people way too much latitude in the beginning of projects or in the beginning of working together, whether I hired them or we're collaborating or it's a publisher or service provider or whatever, because I, my own wound is like, I want to be liked and I really want this to work. Of course, I want this to work. I, I have a vision. I want everybody to be their best. I want to, I want to get where we want to go. So I give all this latitude of just like, here's the vision and I trust you and let's go. And if it doesn't work out, then there's this kind of this resentment that builds and this kind of pent upness and it can come off as a little like, wow, out of the blue, I'm dissatisfied. And what I've, what my ego mind has told myself is, is like, that's okay to be out of the blue, dissatisfied and expressive of that because I've been so loving and accommodating along the way. <laughs> that's, that's not transparency. That's not, that's kind of not whole leadership. So my most recent shift in the last two years has been, let's just get it really clear in the beginning. And I'm loving on behalf of the vision, which includes a healthy working culture and everybody being happy and fulfilled. This is where we're going. This is how I think we're going to get there. Like, these are the expectations. And oh, way smoother. I mean, I'm still, this is my growth edge. I'm still working this out. Mm -hmm. um, and that my, my duty, again, to use this phrase, is to create conditions of healing for my life. So I got to make sure that my respiratory system is great that I'm getting enough sleep so that I can support you and, and encourage you to do the same. Mm -hmm. And when those things falter because of my own bad choices or because someone on the team isn't carrying their weight, then I got to look at it like, hey, let's just get really clear about what's going on. Do we need, do we need to carry you, team member, for a little while longer because you're struggling? Okay, let's just be real about it. Yeah. Um, and I have found that loving loving, transparent, frequent conversation is the solution all the time to everything. And I would say that's been my, the only time things go awry is when I am not just being up and open about things. Yeah. I'm going to have to plug in my phone one sec. Yeah, no worries. Okay. One second. It's a good thing we took the, okay, we are rolling. Yeah, so I actually just had a conversation with my business partner to ensure that there was a framework that would in, uh, incorporate that authentic, uh, you know, f somewhat frequent conversation that we are yeah. kind of like on the same level where instead of talking about, you know, tactics and specific business things, more kind of like what's the holistic energy of our partnership right now and where we see this business going together and where are you at in your life energetically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and where mm -hmm. am I at? And how do we thread that needle so that we're both moving in tandem versus one is like going at some other speed and some other direction and the other one's trying to do the same thing but completely opposite direction at a different speed and it's just very painful mm -hmm. and so we 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 decided 
as of last week that we're going to have a monthly meeting where we just do that. We just check in. And maybe it's like 10, 15 minutes. We're both doing good. We're both kind of like speeding along together. And then other times we're like, all right, (laughs) we got to get realigned. So that's what I've kind of discovered for myself. And then another big one that I'm, I've just realized is ultimately, whether it's my wife or a coaching client, my business partner or a family member, I am not responsible for their journey of healing, learning, growing, and transforming. But I can, as you said, create conditions of healing when I interact with them. Yeah. And oftentimes, that's literally just me listening, right? Because yeah. early in my marriage, I used to try to fix my wife's problems. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now what I do is I say, do you want me to just listen or do you want like constructive feedback. 95% of the time, I just want you to listen is yeah. what she says. And I'm fine with that. I'm like, okay, as well, a man, got, I know what to do. With that. Well, uh, and now <laughs> I have an action to do. Listen. <laughs> That's right. As a dude, you need the assignment. Yes, I get yeah. totally get that. We have a question. Now we're an all women team. We have a question we often ask, you know, there's D, D Bailey on my team. We've worked together almost seven years now. And we'll just ask each other, how's your heart? And this Mm. question works. I use it with my son. D asks me all the time. I use it with my man. And and it's so, uh, what's the word? I mean, it's very illustrating of what's going on, but it it can explain so much. You can just be like, you know, I'm really, I feel really weighed down by this, or I'm really excited about that. And that heart exchange gets taken into consideration with like, okay, Maybe we should have a meeting about margins sooner than later. Yeah. Maybe we should book a week off so that you can just sleep. It's just, how's yeah. your heart? What's going on in your life? Yeah. Hey there. Just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Fit Rich Vegan. If you're ready to get in the best shape of your life, double your income, and 10x your savings investments, then this is the coaching program for you. But wait a minute, Dragon. Isn't this your coaching program? Heck yeah, it is. I spent the last eight years mastering my fitness and my finances, and I've built an incredible coaching program with an incredible team to help you get the body of your dreams and finally achieve that level of financial success that you've been seeking. So if you want to find out if you're a good fit for the program, go to fitrichvegan.com and book your free consultation today. Or you can just DM me on Instagram with the words fitrichvegan, and we can chat about if it's going to be a good fit for you. I'm committed to empowering people to actually achieve their fitness and financial goals. I spent the last 20 years trying to figure this out on my own. And what I realized is the key to doing it is not doing it alone. You have to have coaches, you have to have mentors, and you have to be a part of masterminds. And that's exactly what Fitch Rich Vegan has. It has coaches, mentors, and it is a mastermind. So again, if you're ready to book your free consultation today, go to fitrichvegan.com or drop me a DM on Instagram. Yeah, that's a really interesting one you brought up because, you know, I've, my heart has literally felt for the last few weeks like it is painfully burning. And I think this is because I'm subconsciously trying to take responsibility for everyone in my life's uh, healing growth journey. And it's my heart's like, yo, this is too heavy. I'm straining and you need to let that go and just like love them like, you know, purely unconditionally, not with like conditions of them going at some certain pace or being a certain way. And like, I need to lift that weight off of my own heart in order to, you know, free it up because it's like there's too much 
piling up on it and it's just been hurting and it's been causing, you know, I feel like this, like, I don't have a cold. I don't have a, you know, temperature. I'm not coughing. I don't have a sore throat, but like literally just like this burning in my heart center, but not like burning on fire, like passionate, but like, yo, this hurts. And, you know, I've been kind of in the last few days and I'm not surprised, like I'm connecting with you. Like, I think this, you know, uh, divine perfect order is kind of like putting all these things together and I'm reading your book and it's all about, you know, uh, just having a loving heart that is, is not kind trying to control situations or people or be, you know, responsible, but is instead just, you know, being loving, accepting, compassionate, forgiving. Yeah. All those things wise. Yeah. I think too, you know, the world is suffering. And so having immediate people in our lives who are suffering, maybe a few years ago, it would have been easier for us to accommodate, but there's so much going on in so many sectors and cultures and countries and from like, you know, just, just all of it, just all of it. I don't need to list it. And you are, you are a cell and the body of the earth. You yeah. are all going to be feeling things. And I think we're just, we're just getting the idea of interconnectivity. So if you're feeling it because of wife, business partner, children, family, it's part of a theme that's happening for the planet. Yeah. So as we are going through that theme, yes, what are some you know, strategies or tools or ways of being or even just, you know, emotional or mental frameworks that we can utilize in order to be good stewards of this mm -hmm. earth? Um, for me, what's helpful is to, I just hold the belief, the knowing that like, I'm here to heal. I'm here for the purposes of cleaning stuff up. Okay. And it's not always easy and it's challenging being in this, you know, in this dimension at this time in human history. Like them's just the facts here to heal is challenging. This is messy. OK, uh, I'm mature enough to accept that. OK, now, without sounding like fatalistic, it's like, well, how do I make the best of it? It's like I want to thrive. I want to be the antidote. So okay. I think the next thing, you know, after that awareness of like, you know, we're here and this is the work is like what's your commitment to purposefulness meaningfulness lovingness forgivingness whatever the virtue is that you want to embody like it's got to be higher than just the bucket list you can still have your bucket list by the way <laughs> you can still have goals um you've got to be anchored to something deeper you've got to be facing something higher or you are going to get thrown off center all the time. If you don't reach your goals, it's it's going to be a bad day. If your partner isn't, they you know you thought they were, you're going to get you, you just get get thrown off kilter. It's the it's that that really that terrible cycle of pleasure and pain according to what's going on outside of me. What a crazy that's insanity. A crazy life. So commit to something higher, and then. You got to show up with the practice like it's constantly asking yourself, well, two things. How can I create conditions of healing? How can I serve? But like, who am I really? Who am I really? You know, I personally am here to say to everybody, believe it if you want, but you're actually not hmm. the wound. You're not what happened to you. You're not what somebody called you. You're actually the healer. You're not the conflict. You are actually the solution. Um, the divine self, the essential nature, has the power to work through all the heavy stuff down here. So identify as that. You could be in conflict with, let's say, your business partner, and you can walk in and your mind can be telling you, I'm 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 a I'm a business person, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a Virgo, I'm a father, I have anger issues. 
you know, I'm an eight on the Enneagram or my human design is this. You identify with all these personality things. All those may be accurate, yeah. but they're just fragments of who you are. You have to walk into that meeting of like, I am conscious. I am the light of the world in this business meeting. I am love itself. I come bearing the solution. You might not know what it is when you walk into the room, but you're going to believe in your wisdom. I am connected to source. I am connected to universal wisdom. And that's what I'm going to bring to the dinner table. That's what I'm going to bring to this business plan. And your wounded self and society and all the bullshit of social media, all this indoctrination. I mean, the majority of us are majorly brainwashed. It's, it's eons, it's centuries of propaganda. Now we're living in the middle of propaganda machines, of news media that cannot be trusted, of social media that's over-filtered, of people who claim to be healers but haven't even begun yeah. to work on their own wounds. So it, like we're really swimming in the sea of light and dark and illusion and truth. It's tough. It's tough. So you've got to be committed to the virtue. And then there are all the practices that help you stay aligned. We all know what they are. You got to meditate. You got to sit down so you can hear your higher wisdom. I mean, we keep repeating the same lessons, attracting the same stuff, getting in a business with the same people, having the same argument with their partner. Have you actually sat down for 15, 20 minutes and, and were just quiet and asked your soul to give you a little insight? Do that every day. And I don't know if your life will change, but what comes your way, you'll be so much more receptive. You will sleep better at night. No one's going to pull you off center if you really have a committed practice. Yeah, a few thoughts in response to the wisdom that you d just shared. So I love the truth of you're a healer, not the wound. You're the, the healer of the wound. And one of the things that I, I deeply believe is that our soul chooses our, our parents uh, and all their stuff as well as our wounds so that we can come be the healer in this lifetime. And that is such an empowering truth, right? It's not like I'm a victim of my terrible parents or I, for the record, my parents are great but I still inherited their shit. You know what I mean? And I'm glad because I chose them. I chose their shit. Um, and, uh, you know, I have my stuff to work on. And it is so incredibly empowering to be like, I'm the healer. I'm not the wound. I'm not the person who has, you know, food and body issues. I'm the, I am the soul that has come to heal the connection to this body. You know what really helps? Language that helps me with this is all that stuff, mm. that's personality stuff. I'm bigger than my persona. I'm, I'm bigger than the traits. That's helpful because you also don't want to deny that like, yeah. those things happened. And when it comes to, mm. you know, that much more empowering perspective of, you know, I chose my parents, I like to push it a little further which is because what happens a lot is you know we wake up and we get some therapy and we get some coaching and we realize oh i'm i'm repeating the same wounding that i got from being a child and neglected abandoned whatever <laughs> catholicism all this stuff and all th that's true that's really like great awareness but i think it's even bigger and deeper than that which is the higher self comes in hmm. with some themes so uh the simplest example is your higher self, your soul is saying, all right, we're going to work on this theme of abandonment so that you can be more whole, more powerful, realize that you're you're connected. You're really the beloved of the universe, you know. So just to really send you to school on this abandonment issue thing, um, let's choose some parents or some kind of family of origin that is going to poke at that wound. You're going to have some kind of abandonment situation in your formative years so that you can really, really get it because you really have to find the medicine, rise above it, get in deep 
And it's like, my father abandoned me. Yeah, okay, that's harsh. You heal. You go, okay, go to the next level. I'm here to heal this abandonment theme in my very being, in my soul. And that is why a father who abandoned me hey. is my greatest teacher. And do you want it to happen to anybody else? No, because you know what compassion is. Do you wish it was different? Not always. I mean, lots of people who go through extreme things get to the other side and say, you know, I wouldn't change that, you know, three years of cancer for anything. It wouldn't have changed, you know, made me whole. Yeah, I know you see this with your clients, I'm sure. Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. This show is brought to you by Feel Free from Botanic Tonics. This product is unlike anything I've ever had before. No joke. It's made with kava root and other ancient plants. And just half a shot gives me this incredible sense of focused flow and productivity. And I love to take just half a shot right before I work out. I take it with my pre-workout and it takes my workouts to the next level. It is seriously unlike anything I've ever had. It's also an incredible productivity tool for any big work projects that you have or long periods of time where you just need to be super focused in flow state and get a lot of shit done. So if you want to give this a shot, you can go to botanictonics.com and use code DRAGON at checkout to get 40% off your first order. No joke, 40% off with code dragon that's feel free from botanictonics.com code dragon feel free feel good yeah no it's amazing so somewhat related to this is doing work with our inner child and in the book you have some practices that you can do to kind of like check in with your inner child and you know, I was I was doing some of that practices this morning, and it was really powerful. Uh, uh, he just wanted to know that he was okay. And the way, like, literally, that was like, he was feeling scared because of all the kind of, like, the heart pain and, you know, the things that have been going on. And he just wanted to know by Big Justin that everything's okay and everything's gonna be okay because Big Justin's got it. And then he, yeah. And then he's like, now I wanna play. I want more time in nature. I wanna jump on a trampoline and like, I wanna do some more fun things. Um, And like, it was like so powerful cause like I literally was able to, you know, one of my challenges is really feeling my own emotions. Because if they're not positive in the sense that like, yeah, today's fucking great. Like I'm pumped. I'm excited. You know, I'm crushing it. Like I'm not good at being like, yo, I'm feeling really emotional and I actually just want to cry. I can say it, but not feel it. And so I was actually able to cry this morning, you know, like connecting to my inner child. And, you know, the reason I bring that up is because I know that is a huge challenge for many, if not most men, is actually really feeling the darker feelings, sadness, grief, uh, you know, shame. And we might feel shame, but like then we immediately fight it with anger. We tend to fight a lot of things with anger. (laughs) So uh, would you mind just speaking some about, you know, both from a, a female and a possibly a male standpoint of just like connecting and working with your inner child. Yes. Well, let's talk about why connecting with your inner child is great for business because that'll cover all Mm. the bases, the feminine and the masculine. I love that. So I used to be, before I got on stage, I would kind of get all pumped and tell myself I was going to crush it and all those things. I really just, you know, the pump, the pump up energy and um, it didn't help in the long run with like just natural anxiety, all the understandable stuff. Now what I do before I'm, you know, there, if there's any jitters or if there's any kind of big challenge in front of me professionally is I tend to my inner child because it's the inner child energy 
the unhealed part of yourself. That's all the inner child is. That's going to cause you problems, let's say. It's going to try and get your attention. So inner child is just a word to describe the parts of yourself you haven't healed yet. It's not you when you were eight years old. It's not, it's actually not your 10 year self, your 10 year old self. You can deal with your 10 year old self in therapy, go back with a therapist and look at what happened to you and the impacts of that. That's not what inner child work is about. Inner child as a phrase really works for so many of us because as soon as we hear it, we soften a little bit. We want to go inward. We want to be gentle and attentive, which is what the fear, shadow, ego, self, it's all really the same kind of pack of energy. And so it's the inner child. When, when you are not, when you, let me tell we'll talk about the excessive things. When you're trying to overcome your fear, push through emotions, override anxiety, criticize yourself into being better, self-help your way, hack your way, 10 step your way to being some version of more powerful and successful, your unconscious self is not getting attended to. And so the unconscious self is going to give you anxiety. It's going to have you make bad investments. It's going to create some shame, possibly. You're going to do some things or you're going to fuck up and it's going to be like, God, this is humiliating. So that the ego starts to get dissolved. Just be gentle in the beginning. It's counterintuitive to our culture. But if you start off with like, hey, what's little Justin need today? And, you know, how you described your morning check-in today is so beautiful and brilliant because once you do that, you've covered almost all the bases because you deal with the dark stuff, the unhealed stuff. So anxiety is not going to get you later on. It's not going to come knocking. And everything your inner child asked you for this morning is the basics of healthy living. I want to get some, I want to be in nature. We know this regulates the nervous system. I just want to know that everything is okay. The mind needs to hear that. You, part of being powerful, baller, Justin, parent of your life, is saying to the unhealed parts of yourself, I got you. How do you, quote, got them? You listen to them. This is being instinctive. It's being intuitive. It's being masculine. It's being feminine. It's being the father and the mother of yourself. So it's not woo woo work. This is this is the edge. And the edge is, I mean, we're kind of we're winding down to, you know, what you and I talked to, about, you know, pre Mike was mm. gentleness is the most powerful medicine we have. It's counterintuitive. It's counterculture. It's what our nervous systems are begging for. Um, it's what the culture needs. Gentleness. I mean, I so totally many people agree. can say we're missing the female voice. We're missing the feminine and business and economics and politics. This is it. This is it. Yeah. And the truth is, we all have a feminine and a masculine side. <laughs> and what I think, and I won't put words into your mouth, is I think we're at a time and space where we are being called to bring more feminine energy into yeah. action in all people yes and, and i think gentleness is like a superpower yeah that men can utilize as well as women but that men Everything. can utilize to like i mean i literally i started jumping up and down and dancing after i connected <laughs> with my inner child and was little little you know just gentle with him and like he yeah. felt the connection you know, we did a little bit of crying and then we started jumping around and dancing and it was like, okay, now the energy's flowing again. Whereas yes. before it was blocked and yes, I was rigid lead. and I, you're leading with your whole self and we have half yeah. leaders. We have unhealed leaders in charge. Hmm. I totally agree. This has been well, so beautiful. I know you. Yeah. Any last words of wisdom or requests to the audience oh, or yeah. anything that you want to mention before? We shut this down. Breathe, 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 breathe. Just, just breathe. That's, that's part of the gentle power. It's like breath work, gentle breath work, not heavy pranayama, fire breathing stuff that has its place, but not every day. Breathing with your whole body, breathing before you press send, breathing in the morning, breathing at night, having some kind of breath work. That is what the nervous system needs. That's what we need to lead. 
is that gentle connection with life force. It'll change everything, change your business, change your life, change how we all collaborate. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for coming onto the show. For people who want to connect with her, we'll leave lots of links in the show notes. Her new book, How to Be Loving, is is full of power and gentleness and deep spiritual insight. And it's it's an incredible lead, really, for for anybody. You can find Danielle Laporte pretty much everywhere online. Where are you most active? Where would you like people to connect with you online? My site. I mean, it's really, you know, everybody needs to own their list now. I prefer to, like, send you things. Yeah. And Instagram, yeah. I'm there. Almost everything makes it on Instagram. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for today, for your time, your energy, and your wisdom. And this... uh, look forward to having you back. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Awesome. Take care, Danielle. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, literally everything can be used as an opportunity to learn, to heal, to grow, and to transform. So whatever is going on in your life, choose to consciously and proactively harness that energy and use it to alchemize your life to the next level. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend or on your favorite social media and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. As always, you can find me at Justin David Carl on Instagram and all the socials, as well as at alchemizelife.com on the web. Until the next time, sending you lots of energy and plenty of dragon magic.